Hi there. Uh, in the new A-levels, contextual knowledge, contextual awareness is a critical part of getting uh, strong evaluation marks. It's important to deepen your subject knowledge as best you can. I was struck by uh, a tweet that was uh, put uh, on social media by Professor Danny Kwa a few days ago, uh, one of the great economic experts on the global economy. And uh, he was referring to an article in The Guardian, uh, and in particular, the imminent um, inauguration of President Trump. Danny Kwa argued, while some build walls, others still see gain in even greater engagement and exchange across cultures and peoples. I think this could be one of the defining characteristics of 2017, the extent to which some countries continue to look outwards in terms of trade and investment. One thinks of countries, for example, such as China or Canada whilst other countries look inwards, perhaps the UK post-Brexit, and uh, even more so, I think, probably the United States, for the moment at least. The Guardian article is about the uh, the, the train that's going to be the first to make a 16-day journey from West China to, to Britain. This is part of uh, China's significant uh, policy initiative of reviving the ancient trading Silk Road route. A very important landmark moment, perhaps, as, as a new year dawns. The, the, the Chinese One Belt, One Road initiative, OBOR, is, uh, is really a significant attempt to promote wider economic prosperity of, of the countries along the belt. This, this chart and this map shows the likely pattern of it. Uh, indeed, um, the, the belt will run through 60 countries across Asia, Europe, Middle East, Africa, those countries together collectively account for 70% of the world's population and uh, well, certainly more than a half of, of current global gross national product. Danny Kwa's tweet um, drew me to the latest report from the World Bank, which every year gives a snapshot, the snapshot of the relative size of significant countries in the world economy using a number of indicators. And I thought this chart was relevant uh, in all kinds of different ways. It takes um, Japan, the European Union, China and the United States um, and other countries obviously lumped together and looks at four key indicators. Now, the data is for 2015, so already a little out of date, but still significant in places. If one measures national output at market exchange rates, at current exchange rates, then the United States is significantly bigger than China, with a 22% global share, uh, just behind the European Union, of course. But if you adjust GDP and express the value of national output uh, using purchasing power parity, adjusting you know, what one dollar will buy across different countries, then the gap between the United States and China closes significantly in 2015, as you can see. Indeed, in 2016, According to the IMF's latest data, uh, China has a bigger economy in size at PPP uh, measurement than the United States. Trade is a, is a measure of the total value of exports and imports. <coughs> and I think it's quite important there to notice that the European Union is significantly, uh, far and away, the biggest single sort of trading region in the world. So the debates in 2017 about Brexit and about the likely pattern of new trade relationships between the UK and the EU will become significant there. And the other aspect uh, which I think was relevant is the fourth indicator on the right hand side, which uh, this is 2015, is stock market capitalisation. Uh, stock market capitalisation is the market value of all publicly traded shares. And you can see that the United States has far and away the biggest a single market cap in terms of the value of sh traded shares, way bigger, four times bigger than China, uh, and twice as big as, as the European Union. Although it's worth noting that the, chi the value of publicly traded Chinese shares uh, is now greater than that of Japan. Well, this chart really tells us something a little bit about a snapshot of the relative size, the relative size of major world economies just a year or so ago. But keep in mind, the work of Danny Kwa, who argues that the centre of gravity in the world economy is changing. It's moving south-southeast. 
And uh, 2017, I think, will be a year when the inward, outward-looking policy direct, uh, direction will become a significant discussion point. Will 2017 be a year when the, the centre of economic gravity, measured by output, by investment, by trade, by stock market capitalisation, and a whole number of other indicators, will the centre of gravity continue to shift east at an accelerating rate? This is certainly one to watch out for as we head into the new year.